Hey everyone, it's Colin Shadwell. I'm trying something a little different today. Instead of playing my usual copyrighted music, I thought I'd do a little voiceover and see how this works instead. So this will actually get to be played on all formats, iPods, iPhones, and the like, as opposed to just on the computer. So hopefully we'll see how this works. And if people tend to like this better, then uh, I'll put comments on my videos instead of playing music over here, over the back. So. Um, okay, so here I am throwing uh, what is going to be probably one of the biggest things I've thrown on the wheel before. Um, as you can see, I've got some brand new clay. This is uh, a high fire stoneware clay from Funky. It's called B Mix. It's really smooth. It's like thrown with thick butter. It's wonderfully uh, smooth and easy to work with. Um, as you can see, when I throw, I, I typically uh, start with a, a palm pull and then follow that with a a knuckle pull or another palm pull depending on how thick the clay is and then once I get to a certain height then I switch to this kind of uh, on the side finger pulls and even though this is sped up really really fast those pulls are really slow my wheel is is spinning really really slow with the higher you throw on these pieces especially these really tall pieces the slower you have to go otherwise your your piece tends to get out of control at the top so my pulls usually take I would say anywhere between 30 to 45 seconds to go from the bottom all the way up to the top. Um, when they get this high, you've really you've got to be careful about where your arm's touching on the inside when you're putting your hand down in there, and then making sure that your piece is really. I, I put a lot of slip on the top of my piece on the side so that my hands easily slide to the side. If I feel any tugging at all, I'll usually stop and 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 come out and really load my hand up with some more slip. Uh, and especially when you're making a, a piece like this that has a really small opening at the top, you've got to keep coming back and compressing that top over and over again. If you get it, let it get too far out, you'll never get it back. So you can see that I make a good effort here about keeping that compressed top over and over, I'm trying to keep that narrow at the top, and then I'll come back and smooth everything out. So I'm a big fan of just getting the general shape in, then I can come back later on. Oh, there was my daughter making a guest appearance. She likes to jump in front of the camera. but. This is a, a general shape that I, I knew I wanted to make beforehand, and now I'm, I'm laying stuff out because uh, this whole series I'm doing this summer, 2013, is really about uh, negative space, taking thrown pieces and, and adding, or I should say taking away parts of the clay to, to, to show negative space, and not just cutting out holes, which I've done in the past and will do in this series as well, but making uh, tunnels that you can actually reach through and uh, water that's inside the vessel will have to go around these things so I'm still kind of experimenting on how I want to do them I, I'm really just kind of at the beginning here just throwing clay in I, you can see here I've, I've cut out two equal ovals that are opposite each other and, and I've split it up with two slabs that will overlap and really just kind of mashing it in there and then once it kind of gets the general shape that I want then I really come back and clean it up so it, it's certainly not the prettiest process right now and I'm sure there's uh, a better way and I hope to find a better way but for right now, it's 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 not bad. It's it's getting me what what I want. Um, uh, as long as I'm willing to put in the work of going back afterward and, and doing a lot of cleaning and, and scraping and uh, adjusting. So now I've I've kind of got it how I want it. It's dried out some, and now I've got the sure form out and I'm, and carving away the excess that I don't want. Um, the sure form is a great tool. It really lets you kind of it's kind of like a sander. It really lets you kind of get down to what you want. So I usually go. Um, sure form to get the general shape and then I go to a, a plastic rib tool or a metal rib tool to kind of smooth out the the carvings left by the sure form and then I'll, I'll hit it with the sponge and really this last step is the most important if you really want your work to kind of be clean I really I'm like a once over the entire piece with not a wet sponge I don't want to get it sopping wet again but a damp sponge you know I'll put it under the sink and, and let it get really wet and then wring it all out and then take it over the piece and really just smooth out all the areas and I'll spend a lot of time um, going over the piece, uh, making sure everything is smooth the way I want it, and then watching your drying to let it dry evenly so that nothing cracks and smooths. But in the end, this turned out to be a, a pretty cool piece. It's really big. I would say it's probably maybe 16 inches high, which is pretty good for me. And the tunnel down the middle turned out pretty even too. So I'm, I'm really happy with the piece, and I'm excited to see what it's going to look like when it's dried out and glazed. And I hope you like it too. If you have any requests for my channel, please let me know, and I'll try to fill you in. Thanks so much.